questions are being raised about her spending and managerial style. This is not what people give money to cancer research charities it's for. Welcome to News Beast. Happy Valentine's Day. Abigail with us today. And Rebecca, happy Valentine's Day to you. Oh, happy Valentine's Aww. Day, John. <laughs> so let's let's talk about you got a blockbuster story mm -hmm. about the Susan G. Komen Foundation CEO having mammoth expense reports. What you got? Yes, Nancy Brinker, she's the founder and CEO of Susan G. Komen. They're all embroiled in this big controversy with sure. Planned Parenthood. And she is she launched the foundation thirty years ago, has raised a ton of money for research. She's Susan G. Komen's sister. Um, total powerhouse, but some questions are being raised about her spending and managerial style, and we looked into it and we found a very questionable expense report. She billed her foundation for $133,000 at a time when she held a full-time job elsewhere. She was working at the State Department. So it raises some questions. The expenses are very unclear. and um, This is not what people give money to cancer research charities for, to pay for someone's a, travel. Exactly. It creates yeah. a real perception problem. If, people, if, if donors think their money isn't getting to beneficiaries, they're going to have a problem. So what I would like to see and what we haven't seen is an itemized uh, report on those expenses. That's a great story. Thanks. Rebecca, you have both a feature on WAGS and a column, but we're doing a Valentine's Day deviation yeah, to I the think column. We're gonna, well, the, both, both, both stories in their way are about love. Oh. One is about Giselle's <laughs> love for Tom Brady and the love of all WAGS, wives and girlfriends, for their professional athlete spouses. But I'm going to talk about my, my column, which was about the happy divorce. That rarest of all creatures. <laughs> that <laughs> most precious commodity. Um, it, it, I interviewed a couple of people who um, have actually managed to achieve the holy grail of separation, which is to say uh, they so split after long marriages and have managed to maintain close friendships with their exes. I mean, Fran Drescher, actually, from The Nanny, is one of these people. She married her high school sweetheart. They were married for 18 years. And then shortly before The Nanny was canceled or shortly after, she was like, I'm out of here. It's over. And they still vacation in Paris together. She, has a, she actually has, has a TV show in the air called Happily Divorced Now, which is about their experience. The, the rocker Jack White of the White Stripes and his, yes, and, 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 and his model ex-wife Karen Elson through um, through a humdinger of a party to celebrate their disunion this past summer. Those are the best kind of parties, by the way. Yes, a humdinger. <laughs> I love a humdinger. <laughs> it's kind of a sweet story. It, I, I guess it is. I, I um, Love can change forms. That that would be the takeaway. Yes. So happy Valentine's Day to all you divorcees out there. <laughs> now, uh, in, in, in the spirit of, I mean, Whitney Houston's very untimely and I think shocking uh, death over the weekend has brought about a lot of, you know, the, the usual hype and hysteria, but also a lot of um, genuine outpouring of affection. Um, but we have Jacob. Come on, Jacob. Come on. I, I need I need I need your Whitney Houston expertise to really ruminate on the outpouring. Yes, your your, your Whitney wizardry. Talk to us. What you got? Well, yeah, it's just a kind of shocking thing. It's obviously not surprising, but but I think it's still it's, it's still, sort of surprising. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, you know, she she just spent so many years being so drug addicted and so angry. I mean, I, I think that there's this attempt now to to pretend that that she was that she was America's princess or something. And the truth is, she she wasn't America's princess for a, for a very long time. And and in fact, I think part of what fed. Uh, the addiction was that you know obviously didn't cause it, but but that she, she was she was tired of being the greatest love of all girls. She she was a girl from Newark, and she didn't particularly like the thing that she had been sold as. She didn't like being called Whitney. Um, uh, People were, called her that. Yes, they did, and and there were you know there were Stay all classic. sorts of questions about her sexuality and, and whether she um, whether she really sublimated who she was to to kind of fit the narrative that they were trying to create around her. I, I think it was really a hard life. And, and the entire family, apparently, was dependent on her financially. I mean, she appears to have been broke. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that, I don't think, was the drugs. I think the drugs compounded it. But, but basically what was going on was that every member of her family practically uh, earned their living from her, and mm -hmm. you just can't do that. Madonna couldn't even do that. It's the saddest you know? story when that happens yeah. to a really talented person. person. I read a report that she was asking for $100 loans from friends, right? right yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I hadn't quite heard that, but I did hear, and, and it's in our piece today, that you know she went back on tour last year because all of them needed money, and she mm -hmm. was in no position to sing. 
Um, you know, amazingly, everybody thought that the voice was gone for good. Clive Davis really believed that what she actually had to do was quit smoking cigarettes, that she was such a chain smoker. Um, Aretha Franklin had quit smoking cigarettes. Can you imagine and, having that talent and, and being and a smoker? Sm and being a smoker. It's and, just such a tragedy, the whole thing. Well, Aretha yeah. had done it, and they got her throat scraped, and she got, her, and she got right. her voice back. Yeah, wow. Who knew that throat scraping was a thing? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to talk about the Obama budget and campaign chronicles because I think our time has uh, been sublimated by more important things. But I'm going to do final word. Wow. Wow. Behave. Scraping? I'm just going to do throat scraping. I'm, I'm sticking with throat scraping. I stole it from you. You do that sometimes. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. That's all from us from News Beast. We'll see you tomorrow.